Welcome to Sunday School Lesson at a Glance, a ministry of the Sunday School Publishing Board, where we focus on teaching, engaging, application, and learning for teachers and students. I will be sharing highlights and key points from the Adult Faith Pathway Bible Study Sunday School book and the Townsend Press Sunday School Commentary based on the International Lesson Series. This week, we continue our fall quarter of Sunday School Lessons. The title of this quarter study is Worship in the Covenant Community. The lessons of this quarter comprise a study of worship practices offered as a grateful response to the covenant relationship that God initiated first with Abraham and later with the people of Israel. The patterns of worship reflect the gamut of community life, from praising God's goodness and mercy to calling on God for help in times of crisis. Unit 1, Leaders Set Worship Example. Lesson 3 shows us Hezekiah's prayerful realization of what is most important the Lord alone is God. Get your Sunday school book, your Bible, notepad, pen, or device, and follow along as we take a glimpse into this week's Sunday school lesson. Now let's get started with this wonderful lesson. The lesson title for this week, September the 15th, is Is It Inevitable? And that is the title in the adult book. The title in the Sunday school commentary is Hezekiah's Prayer. The background scripture is 2 Kings chapter 19, verses 1 through 34, and the print passage is 2 Kings chapter 19, verses 14 through 20, and verses 29 through 31. The key verse in this week's lesson is, Now, Lord our God, deliver us from his hand, so that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you alone, Lord, are God. And that's 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 19, the New International Version. Here are three questions to consider and reflect on as we go through this week's lesson. Question number one, how did King Hezekiah respond during a difficult and overwhelming situation? Question number two, what did King Hezekiah ask God to do for him and his people? And question number three, what did God promise the remnant remaining in Jerusalem? Let's take a brief look at the lesson biblical context. This week's lesson is in the book of 2 Kings. The author is unknown. It is noted that the author was possibly Jeremiah or a group of prophets. The books of 1 Kings and 2 Kings were named because they record and interpret the reigns of all the kings of Israel and Judah except for Saul. 1 and 2 Kings provide a record of Israel's history from the beginning of the movement to place Solomon on David's throne through the end of the reign of Zedekiah, Judah's last king. Israel had been divided, and the two kingdoms, the northern kingdom, Israel, and the southern kingdom, Judah, had begun to slide into idolatry and corruption, leading toward collapse and captivity. The purpose of 2 Kings is to demonstrate the fate that awaits all who refuse to make God their true leader. 2 Kings covers the reigns of all the northern and southern kings, and most were not good rulers. Only three of the 28 kings named in the nation's history, namely Joash, Hezekiah, and Josiah. 2 Kings chapters 18 and 19 occurred around 853 BC and focuses mainly on King Hezekiah who ruled over Judah during a very critical period. The prominent characters in this week's lesson are Hezekiah, Isaiah, and Sennacherib. Hezekiah is king of Judah 
and he reigned over the southern kingdom of Judah for 29 years. He was known for his religious reforming measures. Hezekiah was a son of the wicked king Ahaz. Hezekiah was known for being one of the godliest rulers of Judah. He did what was right in the sight of God. Hezekiah made sure to destroy pagan worship centers, remove idols, and even broke the bronze snake that Moses had fashioned during the Exodus. As it had become an object of worship, Hezekiah boldly cleaned house. Because King Hezekiah put God first in everything he did, God prospered him. Isaiah, the second character in this lesson, was God's prophet to Israel and one of the major prophets in the Bible. Sennacherib, the third character in this week's lesson, was the king of Assyria who was attacking Israel at this time. In 701 BC, the Assyrian king, Sennacherib, invaded Judah and managed to overrun all the fortified cities except for Jerusalem. Both Israel and Judah confronted enemies aspiring to conquer them. Both nations would eventually be captured, something God allowed because of the nation's persistent turning away from God into idolatry. The northern kingdom sinned and disobeyed God. As a result, God allowed the Assyrians to destroy the northern kingdom. The northern kingdom, Israel, would fall first to the Assyrians in 722 BC. The lesson text opens at the point of Judah's, the southern kingdom's, threat by then Assyrian king Sennacherib. Judah, the southern portion of the divided kingdom of Israel, was located between two of the most dominant world powers at that time, Egypt to the south, and Assyria to the north. In 701 BC, Hezekiah and all of Judah faced a crisis. The Assyrians, the dominant world power at that time, invaded Judah and marched against Jerusalem. Our text finds the Assyrian army at Jerusalem's front door. Jerusalem was the only city that had not been captured. Sennacherib's commanding general verbally delivered a message to Hezekiah about the hopelessness of their situation. Sennacherib's commanding general delivered to Hezekiah, through Hezekiah's representatives, the message that Judah had no hope of being saved from defeat. If Hezekiah had any thoughts of getting help from Egypt, it would not come. He said even Hezekiah's God could not save them from the Assyrian army. According to him, Sennacherib, defeat was inevitable. Second Kings chapter 19 verse 1 reads, When King Hezekiah heard this, he tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and went into the temple of the Lord. He sent messengers to seek out the prophet Isaiah, hoping for a word from the Lord, despite what the Assyrian general had said. And we read this in verses 2 through 5. Isaiah got the king's message and sent a reply. Do not worry. Sennacherib will be killed before he can capture Jerusalem. And we read this in verses 9 and 10. Sennacherib was suddenly drawn away to meet another challenge, but promised to return and take Jerusalem. This is where the lesson text opens for this week. The lesson aims for this week's lesson are, number one, distinguish Hezekiah's response to God from those of other Old Testament kings. The second lesson aimed value prayer in the face of a crisis. And lesson aim number three, 
journal, email, or text as a form of worshipful, reverent, honest prayer at a time of crisis. As we continue our glimpse into this week's Sunday School lesson, I'm going to share two key points from each outline in the lesson text and expound some on each one. There are two outlines presented in the Adult Faith Pathway Sunday School book in this week's lesson. The first lesson outline, Seeking God in Times of Crisis. And this is 2 Kings chapter 19, verses 14 through 19. The second lesson outline is God hears and responds to our cries. And that's 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 20 and verses 29 through 31. Let's begin our analysis of the biblical text with the first lesson outline, Seeking God in Times of Crisis. Sennacherib sends another message to Hezekiah. His first message was sent in verse 1, as we read earlier. Verse 14 of our lesson text, and I'm reading from the New International Version. Hezekiah received the letter from the messengers and read it. Then he went up to the temple of the Lord and spread it out before the Lord. King Hezekiah received a threatening letter from King Sennacherib. In verse 14, Hezekiah reacted to the second letter in a different manner. He didn't go to Isaiah for counsel at this time. In verses 1 and 2, he went to the temple and he sought out Isaiah. In verse 14, he went to the temple and prayed alone, taking his plea directly to the Lord. This time, he sought the Lord. Hezekiah's response to receiving the threatening letter, the upsetting letter from Sennacherib, was to go to God for help immediately. The Lord promises deliverance through Isaiah. Hezekiah was in a desperate situation. Hezekiah went to the temple to pray and seek direction from God, spreading the letter before the Lord. He just laid it out before the Lord. God wants us to lay it all out before him. When in our helpless situation, our cares, fears, crises, situations, whatever, God can handle it. Let God handle your enemies. He is more than able. Have you ever been in a desperate situation where your back was against the wall? The Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, to cast all our cares upon him because he cares for us. Let God handle your desperate situations. We should not be afraid to approach God with our prayers, but we must come to him with respect for who he is and what he can do. Key point number one, when we face challenges, we should turn to God in prayer and trust his sovereignty. Hezekiah prayed. Verse 15 starts his prayer to God. Verse 15. And Hezekiah prayed to the Lord, Lord, the God of Israel, enthroned between the cherubim. You alone are God over all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and earth. Hezekiah starts his prayer by recognizing who God is. He focused on who God is. Hezekiah prays that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that God is the Lord God the only true God. In his prayer, he claimed that Yahweh alone is God over the kingdoms of the earth. Again, King Hezekiah approached God with reverence. He acknowledges the greatness of God who created heaven and earth and who reigns over all kingdoms on earth. We should approach God with reverence acknowledging his greatness and majesty. Key point number two, God is supreme over all nations. 
as the one and only creator. Psalm 47, verse 2 and verse 7 reads, beginning with verse 2, For the Lord Most High is awesome, the great King over all the earth. And verse 7, For God is the King of all the earth. Sing to him a psalm of praise. Hezekiah knows that God alone is the true Lord. He acknowledged God's sovereignty and Judah's total dependence on him. Hezekiah is asking God in verse 16, and verse 16 reads, Give ear, Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, Lord, and see. Listen to the words Sennacherib has sent to ridicule the living God. Hezekiah is asking God for help and deliverance for his glory, for God's glory, so his name will be lifted up. Verse 17, it is true, Lord, that the Assyrian kings have laid waste these nations and their lands. Assyria had destroyed many nations and left their land desolate. Verse 18 reads, They have thrown their gods into the fire and destroyed them, for they were not gods but only wood and stone fashioned by human hands. He says, Who burnt up their gods who were no gods at all. Hezekiah could easily understand why Syria had successfully destroyed these nations, the gods whom those nations trusted for protection were mere pieces of wood and stone. They were created objects, not a creator. So they had no power and were easily destroyed. But Hezekiah appealed to the living God to deliver his people from Sennacherib's hand. Hezekiah believed he could. This was a prayer of faith. Verse 19, Now, Lord our God, Deliver us from his hand, so that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you alone, Lord, are God. Hezekiah appealed to the living God for the deliverance of his people from the Assyrians, from Sennacherib's hand. Hezekiah begins his prayer by pleading for deliverance and recognizing that their only hope is in God's intervention. Again, this was a prayer of faith. Hezekiah demonstrates his faith in God by praying for Jerusalem's deliverance from the Assyrians. The second lesson outlined, God hears and responds to our cries. Key point number one, God answers King Hezekiah's prayer. King Hezekiah received the answer from the Lord through the prophet Isaiah. God hears our prayers. Sometimes he doesn't answer as quickly as we want and how we want, but he answers. Verse 20 reads, Then Isaiah, son of Amoz, sent a message to Hezekiah. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I have heard your prayer concerning Sennacherib king of Assyria. The first part of the prophecy predicts the downfall of Sennacherib due to his pride and blasphemy. The second part of the prophecy predicts that recovery will be slow, but the remnant remaining in Jerusalem will survive and prosper. Verse 29, this will be the sign for you, Hezekiah. This year, You will eat what grows by itself, and the second year what springs from that. But in the third year, sow and reap, plant vineyards, and eat their fruit. Verse 30, once more a remnant of the kingdom of Judah will take root below and bear fruit above. Verse 31, for out of Jerusalem will come a remnant, and out of Mount Zion a band of survivors. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Key point number two, God will prosper wounded Judah. 
through Isaiah, God then promised Hezekiah as a sign that these predictions would indeed come to pass. For two years, the people of Jerusalem would be able to eat the produce of their land. It will not be stolen by the Assyrians. The Judeans had not been able to plant crops outside the city walls because of the Assyrians' presence. But God promised that he would feed them for two years by causing the seed that had been sown naturally to grow up into an adequate crop. The third year, people could return to their normal cycle of sowing and reaping. The Lord, through Isaiah, reassured the king that Assyria would never enter Jerusalem. Rather, the invaders would be sent home and the city of Jerusalem would be spared. Hezekiah held off the Assyrians by trusting in the Lord for deliverance. As much as the Assyrians would like to crush Jerusalem and Judah, they would not be able to. God would preserve his remnant. In summary, in the face of impending doom, we too, like Hezekiah, can turn to worshipful prayer and trust in God's promises. Prayer during difficult times sustains us. It provides guidance, instills hope, and reminds us of God's faithfulness. Let us follow the example of Hezekiah by turning to prayer. It is vital to see God continuously in all situations and trust his timing. With God's help, we can overcome any obstacle and emerge even stronger than before. So let us always turn to him in prayer, knowing that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Our closing thought in question. Life is full of trials and challenges that can seem insurmountable at times. Question, how do you respond when faced with a crisis in your life? In closing, thank you for tuning in to Sunday School Lesson at a Glance. I hope this glimpse of this week's Sunday School Lesson is helpful to you as you prepare to study and teach God's Word. Don't forget to click the like, share, and subscribe button. For additional information and resources, contact the Sunday School Publishing Board. Blessings to you until the next Sunday School Lesson at a Glance. Sunday School Lesson. Subscribe now.